salve María, llena eras tú. Señor es contigo, bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres. Y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros. Dios te salve María, llena eras tú. Señor es contigo, bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres. Y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Hágase su voluntad, sin la tierra como en el cielo. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ahora en la hora de nuestra muerte. Let's stop it. You're interfering. Interfering with murder, it looks like. They killed my son. Innocent, senor. Oh, Innocent. Stay clear, Jethro! No, no, no! Peter. He's dead, I'm afraid. It was crazy. It was crazy. Who? Who did this? It was an old man. An old man. And a boy. A boy. Jethro. Easy, boy. Are you easy? Quince, you take care of Barry and Peters. Also those two. Is he going to be all right, Simon? He can stop the bleeding all right. Without a doctor, gangrene will set in within 48 hours. Now, we've got to get him to a town or a doctor and fast. Uh, we'll have to cut a wiki out of some of these branches. Look, Quince, there's a town called Regis just north of the Kansas border. Uh, when you get back, uh, tell Wishbone to bring a buckboard and come on in. We'll need it. I better bring some of the boys, too. No, you keep the herd moving north. Uh, we'll catch up to you when we're ready. What about whoever did this? Well, we just got to have some law. Anyway, we can't worry about that now. The main thing is getting Ian into a dock. Hey. Hey. Oh, 
boy, when it's close. Walker always wins, right? <laughs> I got a man here who's in pretty bad shape. I want to know if there's a doctor around here. I need a hotel room fast. Give him a room. Give them a room? I said give him a room, boy. Follow me. You know, there's a law about using firearms in this town, boy. But I won't mention it this time. <laughs> Boy, I'll see what I can do about getting your doctor, all right? Thanks. That's all right. That's all right. Sheriff, I saw him. I know, I know, I saw him. And that's all? Old man Kane himself told me what Morgan happened. Morgan Kane didn't tell you anything. You're sweating, Walker. Get yourself a shave. You'll feel better. Put it on my tab, Jarvis. Sure, Sheriff. Now, what do they say they wanted specifically, Walker? A doctor, Sheriff. Oh, well, in that case, as soon as you get through brushing me off, Jarvis, get over there. You mean doctor that hurt Rover? Well, what do you think I'm at? If you say. I say. What if that Rover's hurt real bad? What if they have to stay on? What do you want me to do? Well, <laughs> why ask me? I ain't the doctor. You are. Walker, come here. Hold out your hand. What, are you going to read my fortune, Sheriff? You'll need this. Easy. Oh, no, 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 don't hang me. You must not. Don't, oh, no. Don't sort out of his head. Don't, Got a touch of fever. He's an old man. Dad, but he'll live. I'll clean him up in an hour or two. You can ride out. An hour or two? Please don't. Do you know how much blood he's lost? He's a young boy. No. I didn't say you had to ride out. I said you could. Don't, don't, you Maybe you ought to get a law chasing after whoever it was before they get away. You don't worry none about Ian now. I'll stay right here beside him. Kind of help the town dock here. No, no, no. Easy, boy. Disgraced your brother enough for one day. What's wrong with you, boy? Is there no grief in you, no pain? An animal would feel more. You will go. Pa. You just blind yourself to it? Not six. 
Hours ago, you killed four men. You, we, Jethro, we. You and me, father and son, for our flesh and blood. And don't you ever forget that. We did it for him, for Vance. And we were right. The whole town knows we're right. Even Blaine. Blaine. What right has Blaine got to mourn for Vance? Somebody has to say a few words for Vance, Jethro, with no well, why Blaine? Why him? Or to show him there's no hard feelings? To show him that you, that you understand that he was only acting in Vance's That's best wrong. interest? For... No, Pa. I'm not going. You have to. They'll all be there, every man, woman, and child in Regis, to share with us our grief. You will stand there erect and proud as your brother would have. And they put you into the ground, you understand? You will go. You will go and face what must be faced. For us, there's no other way. Sheriff Blaine, it'll have to wait. I'm afraid that's uh, that's impossible. You see, there was a lynching this morning. Some people were killed. In fact, one of my men and the other one, as you saw, is kind of bad shape. Now, uh, the only problem is, is that uh, whoever did it got a half a day's head start. Take it up with the sheriff. He'll be back at four o'clock. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I told you that we got. I lynching. told you four o'clock. You steer punches are all alike. You figure you can come into a peaceful town like this and bust it up. Take some advice. Lay off Regis. Is that some sort of a threat? Ah, uh, hold it, Charlie. Hold it, Clem. You know, you're impeding the boardwalk here. We got an ordinance in Regis about that, impeding. I mean, you're causing a disturbance, impeding. Follow me? Yeah, I follow you. Uh, and we got no problems. Just one, and I got a drover named Peters who's buried out trailside. And I pointed out to you, plain and polite, what the law in Regis is. And before I enforce the law here, you better get out of Regis, cowboy. I just want an answer.
my people of Regis. Most of you know me for a long time. Now. Now, I ain't a man of a lot of words, as you all know. And at times like this, it's a mighty sorrowful thing that eight years ago, the Lord saw fit to take from us our only reverend. And so, it falls upon me to do the best I can. Vance Kane, 20 years old. A boy full of the wildfire of life. Sometimes too wild, as I can testify. But this same boy worked from dawn till dusk. Honored his father. Gave credit to this town. A boy any one of us would be proud to call our son. And now he's gone. And every one of us, friends and strangers, knows that's wrong. Wrong! Amen. 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 But all we can do now is to hope and pray that Vance Cain find sanctuary and justice in paradise. Yes. Sheriff Blaine. Sheriff Blaine. Uh, Rowdy Yates, Sheriff. I want to apologize for Walker there. He told me all about what happened. He's not too bright. You know how it is. He ain't never been more than 50 miles out of Regis. He told you about... The Lynch? Yes, he did. Yeah. Well, I was kind of hoping the law might uh, do something about it. Go after the men before they got away. But uh, maybe I was wrong. Might not have to go outside of Regis to get him. Well, after the burial, if you can give me a description of him, I'll telegraph it. Oh, I can give you a description, all right. An old man and a boy named Jethro. Kid's got a bum leg. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a murder that no one in this town seems to be concerned about. Why? Mm-hmm. Well, you're spoofing me, Mr. Yates. You can call it murder if you like, I guess. I ain't spoofing you, and I'm calling it murder. Well, you can call it whatever you like, if that satisfies you. It doesn't satisfy me. How come these people haven't been arrested? All right, I'll tell you, Mr. Yates. The Cairns had a right to hang them two men. When I released them two drifters, I saw that Vance Kane boy asleep on the cot. When my deputy Walker came in, he found that boy dead. He was not asleep. A boy who was in for nothing more than being drunk and sassing back. Them drifters broke his neck. Does that still give the Canes the right? In my judgment. You rely on my judgment, Mr. Yates. It's the product of a lifetime's experience. Go away. Forget about it, you hear me? You live long enough, 
Someday you'll come back and thank me. Oh, yeah, sure I will. For letting them get away with killing one of my men, wounding another. One of your men? That's right. Kay never told me that. He only told me that justice was carried out. Well, I assume you'll bring him to trial, huh, Sheriff? That's what I figured. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Well, I thought I'd send a telegram to the federal marshal in Wichita. Now, you look here, Yates. You want to punish somebody for this, you punish me. It was my neglect that happened in my jail. That boy was attacked in my jail. Now, the Canes are not at fault. You want vengeance? I'm your man. I don't want vengeance. I just want justice. That's all. Yates. All right. Your way. Tomorrow noon, I'll call a coroner's inquest, and you've got any evidence you can present it there. In the meantime, if I was you, I wouldn't leave the hotel till then. Morgan Kane's got a lot of friends. They're gonna be at the inquest tomorrow, Pa. Who? Them drovers? And the one at the funeral, the one with the gun? I could tell by his eyes, when he looked at us, he knew, Pa. He knew, and he's gonna come. Fear. Your whole life's an unholy testament to fear. Afraid since the day you were born. Anyway, Sheriff will take care of things. Blaine? Well, he's, he's the one to take care of things, Pa. What if he don't? What if he can't? What if he don't even care, Pa? Suppose he decides it'd be smarter for him to let those drovers run us off to trial in Wichita. There ain't nobody going to run me off from here. Thirty years of toil and sweat, breaking hard ground and turning stone. Your mother's buried here in our Vance. And it's here I'm going to be set down. Tomorrow, Jethro, it'll be different. Tomorrow, things will start to change. It'll all begin to wash away, and we'll forget what we must forget. Sun up, we'll go ah. back to work. I'm going to bed. about having to leave your gun here, Mr. Kane. But I'm sure you'll understand and see it my way. This is a legal hearing. It's got to be conducted properly. That means the witnesses can't carry guns. I understand that, Sheriff. But why's there got to be a trial? You know what I did was right. You know it was right. Yes, I know that, Mr. Kane. But would you rather have it settled here in Regis or Wichita? Your friends or the federal government? Real justice? Well, the kind of justice you'd get slapped across your face by outsiders. That's why, Mr. Kane, we're your friends. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Ah, good day, sir, Mr. Morgan. And good day, Mr. Devereaux. 
You got a violent streak to you, just like your brother. Don't Walker. You... Why don't you go over to the town hall and see if everything's all set? Yes. Don't be edgy, Jethro. Nothing's going to happen to you or your Paul. Well, you better make sure that nothing happens. And I mean him too, your toad walker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about walker. I'll handle him. Well, you better. You ain't threatening me, are you, boy? I guess there is a bit of your brother Vance in you, ain't there? He was always one for priding it and living his betters. But you'd know more about that than me, or even your paw, wouldn't you, boy? But you and me know something else, don't we, boy? Just you and me. Even Walker don't know. Don't. Just telling you how things are. How they are and how we want them to stay. And what I mean is that I think it's just about time you signed over this creek land to me like we talked. Now, you sign it here, Jeffro, right here. And we'll get your father to think that uh, you lost the creek land gambling. Hmm? You said... You said after the inquest. All right. You're smart, Jethro. Real smart. All right. After the inquest. Session. You are the first witness. Take the chair. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, etc., etc., etc.? I do. Go ahead. What? Tell your story. Well, it's quite simple, really. Yesterday morning, Ed Peters and I were riding point ahead of the drive. And we saw two men about to be hanged. Well, we tried to stop them, but... But what? What reason do you have for not stopping them? Because he tried to kill him, that's why! <laughs> Will you stop rapping that thing when I'm talking? You shut up or I'll hold you in contempt. Oh, you try to hold me in anything and I'll put you I so deep down into the weather. Look, take it easy. Will you leave me alone? What's the matter with you? You claim you were shot. Is that right? No. No what? I don't claim I was shot. I was shot. You should know you took care of it. I took care of it, but that don't prove nothing. It's still just your word. You were shot off your horse on the ground. Is that true? Yes. Then you didn't ever actually see anybody shoot. You just uh, allege that... Now, look! I don't allege. And I don't claim. He was the one who did it. He killed Peters. And the two men that Mr. Yates found hanging, he hung. He and that boy seated next to him. I warned him. I told him he was doing the devil's work. But pa, don't say no more. Look, you leave us alone, understand? He didn't mean to hurt no one. He didn't mean to shoot you. But he did shoot me! And you did kill pieces! And you hanged us! That's enough. You're out of order. You all right, boy? 
Yes, I'm all right. Look, this man's not on trial here. You're out of order, I said. Ain't he? Sheriff? I ain't the judge here, Mr. Yates. I think maybe you are. I think you don't know very much about Regis. You're a stranger here. Did you say the witness was dismissed, Mr. Jarvis? Witness is dismissed. No more witnesses. I guess the jury can retire to reach a verdict. I think maybe there are. I think you ought to call them. You uh, talking about the Canes? That's right. We already know where they was, at home, shocked and rendered helpless by the tragic news of their loss. You want me to call witnesses to testify to that fact, Yates? I can. Yeah, I'll bet you can. Probably the lawmen around here were all staying home with them. Huh? That's why they couldn't prevent the hanging. Why don't you call Sheriff Blaine? Hmm. I have no testimony to offer, Mr. Yates. I have no legal standing here except as keeper of the peace. And like you, I will have to abide by the findings of that jury. Not only will I have to, but I will. So will you. Unless you're a bigger fool than I take you for. The jury reach a verdict? In our opinion, since not the slightest proof of a crime even having been committed in this territory has been established, we, the jury, find no reason to hold Morgan Jethro Kane over for trial. So say y'all. Aye. 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 This inquest is done and over. Send this out. Well, I can't. Why not? Well, uh, I'm sorry, but the telegraph is. Uh, uh... Well, the wires ain't down here exactly, but uh, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. I got something to say to you. I want you to leave us alone. You understand? You've had your day in court now. I just leave us alone. You expect me to forget that you killed one of my men? We didn't mean for none of it to happen. I'll say it once. I regret what happened. I have no shame over the hanging of those two. But I do regret the death of your man. I want no more killing. You keep coming at me, you'll be doing Satan's work. You keep coming at me, and before long, one of us will be in the ground. You listen to me, Kane. I'm taking you and your boy into Wichita for a fair trial. Now, you can go get your gear and meet me here in town, or uh, I'll come out and get you either way. I'm going to my house, Yates, and I'm going to bed. In the morning, I'm going to my field. You try to come take us. May the Lord have mercy on your soul, because I won't. I don't think I want to wait till morning. Neither do I. Just till dark, Wish. Hey, 
let out. Not out the front, they never. Walker, teach him. The work, I didn't. What? Ow! They probably went back to their herd. Oh, no. Not that hot headed trail, boss. They're heading over for Kane's place. What now? Round up a few of the boys. Lodi, when they get here, you deputize them and send them over to Kane's place. Walker, come on. In slow. Lodi! Posse's ready. It's all off. You mean Blaine don't want a posse? Sheriff said for y'all to go on back home. He said him and Walker will handle it themselves. You did a very good job, Lodi. Now all you gotta do is just sit here and cool your heels and keep your mouth shut, and we're here to see you do just that. <laughs> Take you and the boy in. And I swear to you, I'll take you in one way or the other. shed over there. We'll do this my way. One more step and you're dead. All right, toss your guns over behind that rubble there. Mr. Kane? Looks like you have a couple of trespassers here. I warn them, Sheriff. You know I warn you. I told them to stay clear of my land. Well, that's your right and do. A man always has a right to kill in self-defense. And if I were you, sir, I'd go right to it. All right. You heard him. Now, clear off. Go ahead. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him, Kane. No, Pop. No more killing. No more. I was the one who done it, Paul. All of it. I killed him. I never meant to do it, Paul. But you didn't know him like I did. Lie. Cheat. 
taunting me, all the time taunting me. You better shut him up, Blaine. All right, that's enough talk now, boy. I ain't afraid of you no more, Sheriff. You do whatever you want to do. Who, boy? Who was it you killed? My brother. I killed my brother, Paul. Jethro, you're lying. Why are you lying to me, Jethro? Like your paw says, boy, you're lying! I ain't lying, Paul. And he knows I killed Vance. It was him who found me with Vance dead. And I've got his toad walker to, to hide Vance's body in the jail. You tell your pa you're lying, boy. You hear me? You tell him. I killed Vance. In the alleyway right behind the town. I didn't mean to do it, Pa. I was just trying to get him to come home like you said. But, but he was drunk. And he started... He started taunting me about my leg again. How I should have been a, a daughter like, like Ma always wanted. And I couldn't stand it no more, Pa, coming from him. I couldn't stand it no more! And I... I took that whiskey bottle away from him and... And I hit him. And I hit him. And I hit him! And I hit... them two that we hung that did it. It was me. I was the one who killed Vance! How do you know it was you that killed your brother, Jethro? How do you know he's even dead when Walker hauled him off to jail, huh? I want to kill him. I want to kill that guy. Walker, you better tell us what happened, huh? Was Vance Kane dead or alive when you hauled him off that jail? Did you kill him? I think you better answer him. Come on, Walker, you better tell us. Come on! All right, all right. It was alive. Shut it! I only did it because Blaine told me to do it. You shut your mouth, Walker! But it's you who told me to work him over. It was Blaine who told me to finish your Vance. It was Blaine. Blaine. Everything is always Blaine. All right. Now you better drop them guns. Now! Thank you.
come down here, Kane. Good as new. In a couple of days, I'll be much better. When do I get my horse back? A few more days. Mr. Yates, do you think a town like Regis ever can change? I, I guess everything changes eventually. Either it changes or dies. At least now it'll have a chance. We'll see you all in Wichita. Your belt buckle, that horse never bad enough. Breeding what does it? 
I don't know you, friend, but I'd venture to say that horse there has as much as you and I put together. If you kindly step aside, I don't want to risk injuring him while I pull this trigger. Step aside. I've seen men this skittish over a woman, never over a horse. All I was doing was looking. Yeah, it was the way you was looking. You know, in a way, I'm sorry for you, friend. Benson should have known better than to send one man to dispute my title. I don't know who you think I am, but you're making a mistake. Mistake's only gonna cost me one bullet. Plenty more where that come from. I'm a scout for trail herd looking for water. You and that stallion just happen to be here as far as I'm concerned. Uh-huh. You expect me to believe that? No. But you take a ride up to the top of that ridge and I'll show you something you can believe. Like what? Like 2,500 head of beeves. 2,500 head of beeves? Okay, friend. Let's have a look. Jed picked him up. I don't know. He's got a way about picking up strays. I'd better go check on it. Danny, this is Mr. Yates, trail boss. Danny Hawks. Mr. Yates? Danny has a proposition for you. Yeah, well, I'm listening. I understand you're short-handed. Uh, we're usually shy a man or two. Well, we're going the same way. You need a hand, I like company. Why don't you sign me on? You ever done any trail driving before? Well, I'm the best hand you'll ever see. Oh, that'll cover a lot of territory, I'll tell you. Cheap, too. Work for keep. Now, you see, there's one problem. Rowdy. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. yeah. Sign him on. Why? Well, you're short a hand. He's every bit as good as he says he is. How do you know? I know. My, uh, my instinct. Yeah, well, my instinct tells me no. Why? man riding a horse like that out here in the middle of nowhere wants to work for nothing. To me, that spells trouble. I don't need anything impeding the progress of this herd. If you say so. Of course, it makes me look like a... Well, it makes me look bad. Uh, how's that? As much as told him, he was signed on. What are you up to, anyway? Me? Mm -hmm, you. Well, you're short a hand, and I told him he was hired on. Of course, if you don't trust me... About as far as I can throw you. If you knew how that cuts. Yeah, I'll bet. 
Now what do I tell him? Uh, tell him he's hired. You hired him, I'll honor the commitment. Just make sure there's no trouble, understand? Don't worry. I'll tell him. Five hands, my game. Simon? You want to sit in? No, not tonight. Yeah, Why don't you try water if the coffee bothers you? It's not the coffee wish. I'm just trying to chase down a memory. Well, you're not going to find it in the coffee pot. Well, I'll find it somewhere. And soon. Well, don't go away mad. I'm due on God, wish. Well, don't get lost. It's a fine-looking animal you got here. Right. Hey, mister, that's the beauty of the wild. You must set a pretty good store by him, the way you dress him down. Yeah, I did. You know that figures? The more he shines, the more money he'll bring. There ain't enough money in the wild to buy this horse. That's going a long way. I'd say he'd be worth 2000 2500 maybe. Would you take 3000 3500 Hey, mister, you making me an offer? Me? Where would I get that kind of money? But if you could get it, you would pay it. Would you take it? Hey, young fella. How about it? You want to sit in? Oh, I don't want to take your money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boys, you're not only looking at the best horse rider in the country, you're also looking at the best poker player. You're not far off, uncle. You know, I think we got ourselves a real shrinking violet here. And no offense intended, Uncle, but I used to gamble for a living. Uh -huh. Oh, you couldn't take out too much in this game, Danny. Strictly a two-bit limit. Yeah? In that case, I accept. Hey, you, uh... You want to watch my horse for me? Anything kill a little time before I get sleepy. Meaning we're just a bunch of nickel and dime cowboys that can't afford to lose? You said it, I didn't. Now, what's all this talk about a two-bit limit? The way I heard it, you won yourself $2,000 worth of horse flesh playing in poker. Yeah, I was a little different. The man I won that horse for almost half the state of Texas. Now I see why he was willing to work for nothing. <laughs> why don't you deal? Why don't you go ahead and join in? Not me. Mm. Chance to get that stallion. You think that's why I had you hire him on? Well, if that isn't the silliest, craziest hogwash I ever... It wouldn't work. Uh, why not? Well, he'd have my shirt before I had a hair off its tail. He's that good, huh? Look at him. You deal in seconds? Well, if he is, he's too fast for me to spot. What other brilliant little ideas do you have? Not a one. I know is someday I'll own that horse. I don't know how or where or when, but someday he'll be mine. There it is. Open with that. Close with that.
Buddy. Yeah, I see him. Buddy recognize him? Yeah, a funny looking fellow in the center is Nat Benson, owns a fair size of half of Texas. The other two are hide guns. Tough, fast, efficient. Well, if you know who they are, maybe you know what they want. Huh? Me? They want me? They're dead. He talked just like he play poker now. He overplay. I want to talk to you about him, Danny Hawks, and that stallion he rides. I want them both. Yeah, why? Stallion's my property. Danny will string up to the nearest tree we can find. Hmm. I'm uh, doing this talk about stringing up. I don't see a star. No judge, no jury. Since when do you need a judge and jury to hang a horse thief? What do you know about this? Matt here gets his weights twisted around once in a while. What he meant to say was he turned tin horn on a gambling bet. I won that there stallion from him in a poker game, and I guess he feels now we weren't playing for keeps. He won the stallion, that part's true. But a couple of days after he took off with the horse, I found he cheated. It took you... Two days to find out he was cheating? That's right. Yeah, I'd like to play poker with you sometime, Benson. <laughs> I didn't think much about it until I took a close look at the deck we played with. The high cards were marked. Now, if that was true, it happened after we played. See, there are a couple things I've done in my life I really don't want to talk about, but horse stealing and cheating at cards ain't one of them. I say you did both. And you figure you'd get a conviction in court on that kind of evidence you got, Benson? I'm not arguing what a court would do about it. Uh, you want to go ahead and take them. It's yours, but just bring back a lawman and a warrant when you come, huh? Now, look here. Even if I could find a lawman, by the time I got him back here, Danny'd be a hundred miles away. Yeah, well, that's too bad. That's the only way you're going to take him out of here. Maybe you'll uh, change your mind after a while. Maybe. Bluff all bluff. Yeah, maybe. You know, that's the way he lives. That's the way he plays cards. The night I won this here stallion from him, all he had was a king high. What were you holding? Pay I do's it? <laughs> you know, you did me a favor back there, not wasting a bullet on me, and now I'm going to do one for you. Oh, you... Yep. I'm going to take that stallion off your hands. You know, I'm off glad I didn't waste a bullet on you. I like you. A fella needs a fella like you around. Just to make life interesting. I think your life would be interesting enough. Knowing that somewhere up ahead, Benson must be waiting for you. He or one of his boys. They could be anywhere. Behind a tree in that brush over there. Maybe just over the next rise. Maybe all three places, considering the two sharpshooters he's carrying with him. You know he's going to be somewhere, taking dead aim on the man who's riding that stallion. <laughs> well, like I said, I owe you a favor, so I might just be willing to take that stallion off your hand. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am touched. You know, you make a fellow believe in problems. 
You don't think I'd put you in jeopardy knowing you was deliberately taking my place now, do you? noise, so I yelled for him to stop. Sounded like Benson, and I wasn't about to stand there and let him shoot me. So you thought you'd start your own little private war, huh? Well, go ahead, start shooting. Both of you are close enough now, you might hit something. <laughs> the rest of you are no better off. You've been shying at everything all day long. I don't have to remind you that we got a day's work to put in the herd to move, do I? Pretty funny. Big joke. Supposing someone was hit. Nobody was. You figure you can take credit for that? I'm sorry. I guess it was wrong of me to think it was funny. You've been wrong about a lot of things here lately, Jed. Hey, now, wait a minute, Rowdy. You seem to be forgetting one thing, that this isn't over. Benson's still out there, and you can bet your bottom dollar he's got something up his sleeve. Danny says he's all bluff. Yeah? You were to call him, huh? With a herd that isn't yours and maybe a half dozen drovers' lives? to a man has just saved your life. What do you mean, saved my life? I call that plain bushwhacking, mister. Saved your life. You were going to fill that canteen, weren't you? So? Smell the water. Go on, smell it. Poison. That's right. Any man with poison of water who ought to be strung up you got no kick, Ramrod. I could have let you fill your canteen. You got a herd over here that needs water bad. They won't be able to drink, will they? Now, you tell that trail boss of yours that's the way they're all gonna be. Until I get Danny Hawks and that stallion. Well, Simon, you ride back to her and make sure they don't get too close. Right. Gates, I'm sorry I got you into this. Yeah. Looks like I got a little weight cut out for me tonight. Meaning what? Well, they probably spread themselves thin to surround the hide, stop me from going anywhere. So? So I go out and pick me off one or two of them in the dark. You do that, Hawks, and you can just keep right on riding. Don't come back to this outfit. What? They poisoned your water, didn't they? I'm running a herd to market. I'm not entering in any private wars, yours or anybody else's, understand? I wonder about you, Yates. Most of the time, you seem to know what side your bread is buttered on. But you got a weak side that's gonna be your undoing. Most trail bosses would be happy to get me out there gunning after them Jaspers. 
Yeah, well, I ain't most trail bosses. Well, think about your remuda. You hide. I think about them all the time. What if that isn't enough for them? What if they start a whole big stampede? I can tell you this about Nat Benson. He won't stop at anything till he gets exactly what he wants. First you told me he was bluffing. Now you're saying he won't stop at anything till he gets what he wants. Now there's something I'm beginning to regret. You mean the deal you made with me? Listen, Yates, I don't want you to feel obliged to me in any way at all. As far as the deal's concerned, you hiring me and everything it was just a handshake proposition, nothing on the paper. No witnesses. You got a legal right to ask me to move on anytime you want. We well, had a deal. Yes, sir. Oh, Bly. Well, come on, say it. Say what? I got you into this. Well, the more time I spend talking about it, the less. I'll have to do something about it. What are you going to do? I'm going to ride ahead and meet him at the next water hole. Uh, we better get going. Not we, me. Well, there are three of them. Yeah, well, I'm planning to talk, not fight. And one man will have a lot of better chances by himself. Well, if they see just one man, they won't have to talk. You better take me along with you. I think you've done enough already. Well, maybe you're right. But you know something? I take one look at that stallion and... I couldn't honestly say I wouldn't do the same thing over again. Well, you don't have to worry. You're not going to get the chance. Oh, just one thing more. If you're not back by nightfall, have I got your permission to worry about you? Yeah, you have. Talk to you, Benson. Get out there and see if there are more coming. Well, now, I don't think I got too much to say to a man who would protect a horse thief. Yeah, well, the only thing lower than a horse thief is a man who'd poison water. You said you wanted to talk. You ready to make a deal? Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Well, when do you turn him over? Who said anything about turning them over? Just possibly you better make yourself clear. Well, you said you were afraid he'd be gone when you came back with the law. Well, there's a little town of Prindeville up the road a ways. They got a sheriff and they got a judge. You ride up there and get them to swear out a warrant. When you come back, I'll have them here waiting. No. What's the matter? You afraid you might be wrong? This is not a case for the law. Just wondering if you have a case at all. <laughs> well, if I didn't, I got one now. Huh? You, trail boss for a horse thief. Now, that's quite a case. I think your people might just buy that. You know, my men will be after me. You think we're going to sit around here and wait for them? I got to find you first. Him without water. How long do you make it till sundown? An hour and a half, two. Why? Tainted blood. I may turn into a werewolf tonight. <laughs> Sounds like fun. You need any company? You howl for me. Hey, Colby! 
I know that man from somewhere. What man? All I can see is a horse. I'm looking for Yates. You're looking in the wrong place. You still after my horse? Yep. Well, why don't you give it up? You know, I just decided that someday you're going to give him to me. Yates went all up ahead, didn't he? I live this long by one rule. Never ask the boss what he's doing. He's stupid. They're going to get him. What makes you so sure? Oh, now, don't kid me. You think so, too. Well, that's no skin off your nose. If they get him, they're going to offer to trade him for me. Well, you don't know Rowdy if you think he'd agree to that. I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about you. Well, worry. Why don't you go after him? I'm in curfew till after sundown. I'm not. You rest easy, I'll bring him back to you. What makes you think you can? What makes you think I can't? Ever occur to you they might take you too? They don't stand a chance. You know, when I was a young boy, I spent a few years with the Blackfoot tribe. They taught me a thing or two about reading signs. Hey, you're pretty good at Indian tactics too, huh? You can ride two weeks in any direction, never find a man any better. You know, Danny boy, you keep patting yourself on the back that way, you're liable to work yourself up a handful of calluses and a hole in your back. All right, go ahead. And be careful of my horse. me telling you that I knew Danny from somewhere before? Yeah. I saw a man once come as close to getting hung as a man could get, and with good reason. They got as far as a rope around his neck, and then he talked his way out of it. Slickest thing I ever saw. Danny? Danny. Yeah. Sun is still up. Yeah, so it is. I don't suppose Rowdy would ever know about Danny unless uh, we told him. Right. Come on. Turn you loose while I'm alone. Yeah. That's a mistake sending those many years off. Live without supplies. Still a mistake. Think I can't handle one man unarmed and tied up? It's 
Not me you're going to have to worry about, I think. Yeah, who then? You got just yourself to blame for the spot that you're in. You were warned. Tell me something. Did anybody stick a gun to your head to get in that poker game? What do you know about it? I know it was a fair game. <laughs> From 500 miles away, you know that. No, but I've watched Hawks play poker. He doesn't need to cheat. You don't know how bad he wanted that stadium. You, know, you must have wanted it pretty bad yourself to come after it the way you have. Something about that horse. Uh, you wouldn't understand. There's something else I don't understand. Feeling the way you do about that horse, uh, how come you staked it in the game in the first place? Well, there's a certain type of man can push you in a corner, twist things around, and uh, pretty soon you got to prove you're a better man no matter what it costs. Even the stallion, hmm? Yeah. I feel sorry for you, Benson. <laughs> Why? Because you'll never get that horse back. Oh, I wouldn't bet on that. Why not? It sounds like a good bet to me. Trouble with you, Nat, is you're a lousy gambler and too stupid to know it. Take his gun, Danny. That ain't no reason for that. Nat here's a talker. When it comes to action, he's yellow from head to toe, front to back. Only wears that hog leg for one reason. Scare people, it's scare real easy. Look, I said take his gun. Oh, here, let me untie your face. Watch out. It's quite a trap you just laid. Trap? I can't imagine what you're talking about. <sighs> you knew you were a lot faster than Benson. If I was half as fast, I'd be polished lightning compared to him. Well, what are you talking about, Yes, I saved your neck, didn't I? You've been looking for an excuse to get rid of him. That was that excuse. Now if he's dead, his gunman will probably take off and you'll be on your way, huh? No. He may have deserved to lose that stallion. That's still no excuse for cold murder. Hey, what do you think he's doing? I'm going to take you to the nearest sheriff. We'll let him decide how much of this was self-defense and how much murder, huh? Hey, you know, I like you, Yates. You've been fair with me even when it cost you. But you're not taking me in. Nobody's going to take me in. Careful, Rowdy. I wouldn't want you to scare my horse. You're going to try three of us, Danny? Getting hot. I'm thirsty. So am I. Five or six miles to town. I think you two can stand it. self-defense. And why are you worried? I'll look worried to you? Yep. Fact is, I can't stand being cooped up. Even for a while. Well, I can understand that. Hey, Colby. I got a little deal for you. This stagnant for my freedom. Well, you like him, don't you? He's yours. You know, for a man with a clear-cut case of self-defense, you sound pretty desperate. I'm not worried at all about Benson. Fact of the matter is, there are a couple items that might come to light once they get me in custody. I see. Well, is it a deal? I don't know. It's not up to me alone. Well, hey, what do you mean, you front here, Yates? Well, you just take out that little old gun of yours, hold it on until we change horses, and I ride away. Just like that. Just like that. 
You know he wouldn't draw on you. I'm not so sure about that. Take a good long look at him. You're going to see that once in your lifetime. I know it. You've never been on, have you? He's never been as good as it looks. Better. I believe it. So what are you hanging on? Hey, you're a man with everything in the world gain, nothing to lose. Just one thing more I need. Huh? A little bit of your cold blood. Hey, are you trying to tell me no? Yeah, and I don't suppose I'll ever forgive myself for it. Hey, Rowdy, you don't suppose... No, I guess not. Thirsty. I am thirsty. Well, there's some water just up the road a ways. Yeah, well, there's a little old stream right over there to the left. Take you three minutes to fill up your canteen. No. You see that, Colby? You see it now, don't you? That's how far I trust you. It's got nothing to do with trust, hasn't it? You know, I... I think he's afraid to leave you alone with me. From where I'm sitting, that's just what it sounds like. Now, wait a minute. Don't be stupid. Come to think of it, I'm a little thirsty myself. Mule-eared, harebrained. And dry. All right. All right, Danny. Let's get down. Pleasure. How about that? Looks like he trusts you after all. Yeah, wouldn't you know? Hey, Colby. Ah. No, sir, I'm just as good with this here thing as I am with all things I do. You want to try me? No. Get away from that one. Just fine. Hey, beauty. doing that for? Have the stuff ready for the sheriff when he gets here. What about the stallion? Well, you made him a deal. Freedom for the stallion, huh? If you were going to take him up on the deal, then you earned it. If you weren't, back that direction.
How's he looking? Oh, fine. The thing is, I should have put salt in him instead of grease. What can I say? I think the less the better. Oh, just one thing more, Rowdy. When you came back without the water, was it because you didn't trust him or me? Here, you hold this. Let me fix that bandage. Never mind. I, I withdraw the question. You need something, Wish? It was worth it. Worth it? Well, like Danny said, a horse like that comes along once in a lifetime. And for a little while, he was mine. <laughs>